As you could tell by the title of this video, I'm going to attempt to build out my home network. I just moved into a new space that has Cat6 availability throughout my house, and I totally went overboard. It's been a couple of months in uh, research and trying to understand how to do this in addition to accumulating a good amount of the equipment. I do wanna fully disclose that I reached out to Ubiquity for support in this video and they were kind enough to send me out some equipment. Let's go ahead and talk about each individual piece of equipment in these boxes and we'll build it out and by the end of this video hopefully we have a functioning network cabinet at the bottom here you can see a network cabinet this is navpoint 15u it is wall mounted uh, capable but also comes with wheels that you can roll this thing around on the concrete and stuff it also has fans at the top of it and i wanted to kind of play into that next i have the cyber power uninterruptible power supply that is rack mountable it's a 1500 va this was a pretty substantial purchase on my part they're pretty expensive in rack mountable forms. The next box here is the AC Infinity Cloud Plate T2 rack mount fan. It is 1U. It is this, let's see, right here, this box right here, the one where my blurred out finger is pointing to. That is a fan that I'm going to place right above the power supply to draw air, cold air in from the bottom and push it out through the top utilizing the compounding fans that are provided in the Navpoint15U cabinet. Next in the stack is the power supply. All of this stuff up here is gonna be ubiquity equipment that is going to be the brains of my home network. I am going to get into each one of these and take a closer look at each piece of equipment here in detail as we unbox it. All right, so before I start putting the Navpoint 15U rack together, uh, I want to make sure that I have the proper spacing for the rail bars and that it will fit most of the equipment that I'm trying to put inside of it. I want to make sure that I have enough room to give it proper cable management in the back and through the top. Kind of measure where I'm going to go with uh, how deep everything is and I think a good base and a good start with that would be is the UPS. I'm going to get that inserted and properly place all the cables and do some good cable management. Before I mount this cyber power rack mount UPS into the network cabinet, I want to look at it in closer detail. I did remove this screen because you can rotate it to fit your orientation whether it's going to be sitting up like this on a desk or you're gonna rack mount it. Before you rack mount it, they give you all the necessary hardware, but it comes in the box this way and they give you these two desk mounts so you can sit it in this orientation. You have to have a pretty thin uh, screwdriver, so I just use this. You pry it out, you turn it in the orientation that you want it to be in. This is rather expensive. I'll leave it linked in the description if you wanna take a look at it. The reason I chose this specific unit is because all eight of the plugs are surge protected plus battery. I wanna take an opportunity to talk about girth here. This cyber power UPS is super heavy. As you can see, the included like uh, connection rails that go with the NAF uh, point 15U cabinet are not strong enough. Uh, I tried to put these at the bottom so it would add a little bit of uh, support to the UPS, but that did not work. Okay, so I've assembled this to a point to where it's ready for the ubiquity gear. I've had a lot of trial and error with setting up these rails. So I wanna talk about that while I give you uh, a little bit of a tour of where we're at right now. With the UPS at the bottom, it is super heavy. I tried to mount it utilizing uh, the rails and that didn't work it bent these little rails here because i tried to use them as support but it's way too heavy and it bent them a little bit i ended up moving those up and adding some additional shelving to this setup uh, as you can see the ups is laying flat at the base of the cabinet and has been attached using the cage nuts there just to hold it in place. It's not being supported by them in any way, shape or form. I recorded a ton of me assembling this thing and I'm gonna scrap all that and just jump to this point and just kind of give you a tour of how this is being worked out now. So moving on from the UPS, you can see there's one U of space there. The reason behind that is because there's an AC affinity fan unit there 
And this is temperature controlled, so I, I can mount a little module in it and put it at the top of the cage to monitor how hot it is up there. And through that, it will uh, power on and off and give me some ventilation within the cabinet. And that's important to me because I want to take care of this gear because it is going to be enclosed in this cabinet. And I want to draw air in from the bottom and push it out through the top. We'll get to those fans here in a moment. This specific unit is just to be slid into um, racks. And you can see the three, the triple fan array there that is going to draw air in. And again, that's the reason why there's this one use space between the two. So I can get some airflow. Uh, hopefully it'll draw it in from here and bring it in and around and draw this air up and out through the cabinet, you know, cause hot air rises. I was gonna use a power strip, but I don't need one because this CyberPower UPS has eight battery powered outlets and it is gonna power everything that I need in here. So with my Synology setup, I purchased these um, shelving units from NavPoint. Uh, this is an additional cost to the cabinet. They're really strong and they take up two U spacing, but that is necessary to hold the weight, embrace the weight of each one of my Synology. So with my DS1817 Plus, I have the 10 gigabit card installed and I'm gonna run that directly to my UDM Pro and hopefully I can get some direct connect uh, access to this unit. I have an expansion bay and that's running all of my surveillance station uh, stuff on it. Um, I learned the hard way that you should never have a volume span across two uh, of these things. So one volume lives there and this acts as my backup. I didn't want to stack them both on one shelf. So you can see I installed one shelf here and one shelf towards the back. This gives the cabinet a little bit of a staggered opening. So there's a bunch of uh, space here for air. I'm a little bit concerned with the distance by which these fans are exhausting into this back panel because this will live here. Um, but we'll see how that, uh, and I'll monitor um, the temperature of my expansion unit as time goes on. At this point, I think it's a good structure. It's gonna have nice airflow within this cabinet. I have two more spaces that I need to fill with my switch and the UDM Pro. Before we continue on to the Ubiquiti equipment, I wanted to talk to you about these fans. These fans here are super loud and they're constantly on. They don't switch off, they're not temperature monitored or anything like that. So I thought it would be a nice opportunity for me to use a Wemo plug. Uh, this is connected to my network and I can power it on and off. And I also want to have uh, smartphone control of those fans in case I'm filming down here because this is uh, my new space is an open space and these are loud and you're going to hear them and I don't want to hear them when I'm recording. Let's go ahead and hop into the Ubiquiti gear. All right, so I'm gonna take an opportunity to unbox the USW16 PoE. There, this allows for power over ethernet and is a gigabit switch with SFP connections. This is gen two, so it does have the LCD and uh, has 16 gigabit RJ45 ports. Eight of them are auto sensing 802.3AT PoE plus ports. So essentially that just means that you are going to get power over ethernet which allows you to power access points that Unify or Ubiquity has available. It's a pretty clean unboxing experience. Very Apple-esque, if I do say so myself. You got the mounting holes for attaching the included mounts for your rack mount. This is a 1U device, so it's only gonna take up 1U of space. Let's look at what comes in the box. So you get your power cable and the two mounting brackets and a setup guide the bottom and the mounting hardware. Put this thing together and put it in the cabinet. But before we do that, let's unbox the UDM Pro. The UDM Pro is in a much bigger box. So you get your hardware and accessories and then the Unify Dream Machine Pro. It comes packaged in the same type of packaging as the USW16 PoE. Same experience as what you would, what we went through just with the switch. And this thing is absolutely beautiful. LCD on this side, there's a hard drive space here because this comes packaged with a ton of stuff. Minus 
power over ethernet. I think if uh, Ubiquiti added power over ethernet with these eight ports that's provided, this would have been the perfect all-in-one system because all you would need to buy is an access point, plug it in, and your wireless is off and running. Put this down for a moment, get into the accessory kit that comes with the Unified Dream Machine Pro. Same power cable because the power supply has been built in. And then you got all of the mounting hardware packaged much nicer than what you experienced on the switch. And then hardware to mount the brackets, which are included in the packaging for rack mounting. And then the quick start guide that's included. Day three. Here I am in a different sweater because this has been a three day endeavor for me, uh, work and everything. And it's just taken a long time to get prepared to set up the switches and the access points I had external areas in the house and then also building this thing out and doing proper wire management so it just has some good airflow and it's not blocking pans and things like that and looks clean as well but i just wanted to say thank you for kind of putting up with this video that's been really difficult to produce if i do say so myself um being you know a one band man setting up a camera and a tripod and i do want to uh, take a moment to thank ubiquity for sending out some equipment they sent out the udm pro the USW 16 PoE switch, um, this in wall HD access and this nano HD access point. I purchased everything else that you've seen in this video. So I just wanted to clarify what it is that I purchased and what it is that was provided to me. Um, without Ubiquiti's help though, this would not have been possible at the time that it is. I would have had to save up some more money and you know, go through the whole process of purchasing and acquiring that other equipment. I don't think it would have been as good as it is. Uh, you know, I probably would have went with cheaper options. If you're interested in pricing and availability of all of this equipment, uh, it will be linked in the description. Uh, one thing to note is those are my affiliate links. So I do make commission based off your purchases through those without you incurring any additional cost. It's just a way for you to support content creation here on this channel and it helps me out significantly. Okay, so here's the eight PoE light. It's everything that's included. It does come with a power source. It does come with a wall mount. So I may just mount this to the wall above my actual outlet that connects downstairs but this is the eight PoE light. One thing to note as I adjust uh, exposure is that the four first are PoE and the second four here are not. It also shows a little cheat sheet here if power or any ethernet is being provided or the link speed. So that is quite nice of an inclusion considering this is a pretty affordable power over ethernet uh, ubiquity switch that is pretty small in stature and it is really nice and clean. Okay, so here's the Nano HD. I'm getting into the box. I'm gonna try to do this, you know, off the cuff. Let's pull this out of the box and see what's included. Um, if you buy these in a single pack, you do get a power supply um, and that's included within it. But if you buy them in three packs, the, the, the power supply is not included. But I don't need this because I'm gonna be powering it over ethernet through the APOE light. So I'm just gonna leave all this stuff in here, except I do need the wall mount screws. And let's take a look at the Nano HD in hand. This thing's quite beautiful. So I don't know if it would look bad mounted directly below the TV. I mean, the, the indicator light would show, but I think you can adjust brightness and stuff like that. It feels really substantial in the hand. It's made for indoors only. And then there's just one single um, ethernet jack on this thing and that's how you power it. Really clean design, I really like it. You can also buy skins for these, but I'm not going to do that because I do have white walls. The last piece to my puzzle, and I'm gonna get this installed, is the in-wall HD access point. It looks very Apple-esque. Ubiquity does a great job with that. Uh, let's move that out of the way and see if there's anything that comes in. It looks like it's just documentation, uh, the wall mount, and the mounting hardware. So I plan on, mounting that right there over that dual coax and ethernet port and that just leads downstairs as you can see the rear of it is just one single ethernet port that's powered by ethernet and then on the bottom you got four ethernet ports and this this one far over here where my pinky is showing is a poe pass through that's a really neat feature of this and it gives me the four lan ports that i need for uh, wiring up my printer and my scanner and also direct connecting my iMac Pro. I got the base plate mounted. Uh, one thing that you're gonna have to note is that 
If you have a keystone like this, you're probably gonna need a shorter ethernet cable. That isn't provided in the packaging of the in-wall HD access point. Another thing, um, if you have a combo jack like I had with the coax and this, you're gonna lose access to the coax. Uh, it's not a big deal to me, but it's something you should be aware of. Here's the final install of the in-wall HD. It looks great and I enjoy the fact that I can uh, power this over ethernet and lessen the cables running out all over through uh, under my desk. As you can see, it's kind of a wiry mess right now because I'm getting everything sorted. Um, I did encounter one issue though. Uh, when I want to communicate with my Synology uh, faster, I have to enable jumble frames through ports and the in-wall HD just doesn't have that capability. So when I'm trying to communicate at a faster data rate downstairs to my network cabinet to my Synology, um, this thing isn't gonna cut it. I did come across this solution. It's the Flex Mini. It's a $30 switch that allows for power over ethernet through this port and has USB type C if you don't have power over ethernet. So you can power this uh, separately if you need. Uh, this does have jumble frames and I'm going to swap that in-wall HD out for this and then move the in-wall HD out to a different spot so I can expand my network through mesh. This is a really nice solution considering it's only $30 and it's something that I'm going to utilize in my workspace. Okay, so here's the finished product. One thing that you're gonna notice that's missing is the pile power strip uh, rack mount. It just didn't fit. I wanted to leave an additional space up top for a patch panel whenever I am going to need it because I know I'm going to at some point. There's space up there for that. And if I ever upgrade uh, my Synology uh, NAS, it's gonna be a rack mountable solution so I can condense that uh, space there as well. So I can do my expansion unit, which you see uh, recessed in the back there. And then my DS1817. Uh, plus so I think it's appropriate that we start down at the bottom again I had to put the UPS uh, Right at the base of the cabinet without rack mounting it. It is just too heavy The next thing that you're gonna see is the AC affinity fan. Uh, it's a rack mountable fan It's gonna take air in from the bottom and put, uh, expel it out through the top next thing uh, We already talked about it is my Synology DS 1817 plus the one thing that uh, would simplify this whole setup is that if the Dream Machine Pro had power over ethernet, but that is not built into this awesome setup. It has everything else in this nice little compact form factor except for power over ethernet. Looking at these ports over here, you can see SFP plus and to avoid any bottlenecking, I did get an SFP plus cable and connect it to the switch. Uh, over here, we have my Phillips bridge. Um, that's a pain in my butt but it has to be there just so I can control all of my lights in my home one thing that I forgot to talk about with the AC affinity is that it does include a temperature sensor so I put it at probably the hottest point that will ever be in the cabinet is this front part because out the rear there's uh, exhaust and there's also fans included in this uh, cabinet but I mounted it right there above the UDM Pro that's pretty much it. This is how my network cabinet turned out. And I think I did a pretty good job at putting this together for being inexperienced in the whole process. This is my first revision. I, I know that I probably at some point will make changes, especially looking forward to or to the future of uh, NAS uh, devices. I will be seeking out uh, rack mountable solutions. I think it turned out nice. It's uh, symmetrically set. It's aesthetically pleasing to look at. That's perfect for my OCD. And the only thing that's missing is, you know, uh, RGB. So it's been about a week and some change. I'm finally finished with my network cabinet. Doors on, it's all enclosed, fans on, everything's operating as it should. But I wanted to wait for this one final thing and that is some RGB lighting. I think this looks absolutely phenomenal. Um, I can switch it so it changes colors and all types of stuff. And I, I think it turned out uh, rather cool in my opinion but I may be wrong. Feel free to drop me a comment down below letting me know what it is you think about this whole setup because I think I did a pretty dang good job. Don't like to toot my own horn, but at this time, I mean, look at this thing. It looks absolutely phenomenal. If you're interested in pricing and availability of anything that was showcased in this video, please feel free to hit the links in the description. Again, those are my affiliate links. Um, I've already disclosed all that stuff, so if you shop through those, it helps support content creation here on this channel. If you have any comments, questions, or anything like that of the sort, feel free to drop me a comment down below. Well, that about does it for me in this one. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, you know what to do. Thanks for taking the time to watch. I'm Tomas, and I'll catch you in the next one.